I don't know if you can see behind me. It's dreary. Oh my God, it's so dreary today. It's so dark. There, there's no way you could see any sun. It's just dark and dreary. And just raining and raining and raining. I always catch the rainwater, so um, I've noticed that it hadn't been raining in a while. I'd run out. My poor plants were having to suffer faucet water and all the chemicals that we endure. And some plants show you right away. They don't dig it. Uh, this morning when I, uh, if I haven't made it clear before, bathtubs are the way to go. You gotta take baths. Oh my gosh. It's so relaxing and it's so, I don't know. There's just like, it's something that is like in our, um, it's in our soul or something. It's like written in our soul. It just, it does something to you. It's so, um, it's so relaxing and you just feel so connected and um, you just feel so much gratitude. Yeah, I, I just, I love baths. So um, I just recommend a bath again and do the whole ambiance, you know, you know, light some candles, some nice smelling ones. And um, I like to fill the water uh, really hot and then just shut the door and leave it. And it just gets the room steamy. It makes the, um, well, I have an old fashioned, really old fashioned tub, not a old fashioned cool like a closet, but um, I think it's porcelain or whatever. Like when it starts chipping off and you can see the silver underneath. <gasps> I wonder if it's real silver, you know, when they made those bathtubs originally. Huh. Um, probably a mixture of some kind of stuff. Yeah, I wonder what is under porcelain. I'll have to look that up. Oh, and then this morning to also, oh, let me finish the, the bath thing. It makes the uh, metal warm. So, you know, sometimes you get in the bath and you sit down. It's like, oh my gosh, it's freaking cold. If you touch your back and stuff, if you put the hot water in and you let it sit a while, it, um, it warms all that up. And so it's, it's just a super relaxing, great meditation uh, thing and gra uh, have gratitude. I, I just really love it. I totally say, take a bath and um, take a bath, play your music, dance as much as possible. Those are my recommendations to life. Um, I, there was some more stuff. I'm sure Stella's gonna be in any minute. She went out and when she goes out, you know, she turns to look, are you coming? Come on, mom. And yesterday I made a point to go out with her a couple times. Uh, she just wants me to just go out and do stuff so she can just sit and guard me wherever I'm at. It gives her purpose. She loves it. Um, but yeah, she doesn't like it when I don't come out. She's just so defeated. Oh, so depressing of life. I just have to lay here on the porch in the rain. Why? Um, so I was watching some more of that show last night. Um, I think I saw maybe an episode and a half or something. I don't know that I'm going to finish it. Like there's lots of stuff that I'm just like, but there was some things that I um, found intriguing that I want to talk about. For one thing is, so when they make the switch, for one thing, I don't like that they make it super painful. Oh my gosh. When they show the person, I guess the other consciousness going out and then the other one coming in or if they're just shoving it aside, because it seems that the one is dying and going transitioning and the other one is just swooping in and taking the body, but they don't know the full history of the body. So they can go in to a drug addict and not know it and go into a cancer person and not know it uh, apparently. So... And it's very painful. It is the most uh, horrible thing to watch it happen. The person is like having these horrible spasms and like their head's going shaking crazily. And then all of a sudden they're a new person. I don't think uh, it's quite like that uh, for consciousness to go into other beings or whatever. I think that a lot of times people are inviting the, they just, they don't have an awareness of what exactly energy is and what you're inviting in. <laughs> I don't think, I think that they just, you know, they just don't know yet. Um, but they're, they're going to find out. And, um, you know, when you focus on the positive, 
energy, then you are pulling that towards you. You know, you're pulling, if you're always looking for the positive, if you're always, then you're pulling that energy towards you. And you're going to find more positivity the more you do it. It's uh, a lot better way of being than always be focusing on the negative because you're pulling that towards you. And so many people just like give in to it. They let it like take over. Um, you know, and that's just by awareness. Like they just don't have awareness. They don't have awareness of who and what they are, how energy works and all that stuff. But um, so, you know, they make it very violent for this changeover in this show, which I um, don't agree with. But they also, um, like, if you go into somebody, you are your own memories and stuff. So some of them don't have any memory of this person's, um, like their, it's come up like their calendar. They don't know what this person's doing and the roles and how they interact with people. They're just kind of like guessing as they go, it seems. But, um, and that is what I found when I came out of my body is I was still completely me without a brain. I didn't have a brain, you know, I was outside of a body and I was still 100% me. I could still think, I could still look back and be like, um, you know, why do things look weird? Why does everything look smoky and look back and see my body? You know, so that is where I come up with is like, I think that we are giving a lot more credit to our brain or a lot more Function, functionality and its abilities. I don't think that we really fully recognize what exactly is going on with the brain, in my opinion. I know I've talked about it before, but I just, I, I really, I just see it differently. You know, like, especially those people going in these other bodies, the brain isn't having leftover information. It's not telling them what's on their Google calendar and shit. So, I, and I do think that's true. I do resonate with that. I think that that is um, really true. And, um, oh, there was another thing too. So one of the women, she has, um, sorry, I have a hair on my lip or something. I have, um, she has cancer. And of course she transitioned right when she was about to get some kind of treatment. And then she stands, I don't need that treatment anymore. And she just goes out to do her meeting with her other team members and um so she's having a lot of pain her pain medicine's worn off because she didn't get the treatment and stuff and so uh she pulls out a little cigarette thing full of joints and she says um oh well here's the best pain reliever of all time I'm just glad to have this again and so I thought oh well, that's like a little mini disclosure there like um, and sell it to us like uh, so in the future they're gonna sell it to us like you guys we had no idea that this had so many purposes and we were holding it back from you uh you know see through the bullshit because they knew it was all done for greed corporate america money uh that's why they've held back you know the uh <laughs> the whole thing even when you think about like um the farmers or the, um, I, I talk about them all the time. What are they called again? The pioneers that came across, you know, and I, I always see them out, you know, kind of living on their own, raising their families and then going into the towns, the nearest town, you know, to trade or get stuff or to socialize with other people. Um, you know, back then church was kind of like a social a social place where people could go who, um, you know, wanted to get together on Sundays and sing, I guess. Uh, and it got, um, changed into, you know, more bullshit. Just like, that's what they do. And, um, but so when they had that, you know, when, if you had your own little farm, then you would have your own little cow, you'd have your own little chickens, you'd have your own little goat, your sheep, whatever it was, you know, maybe you had sheep because you'd shear them and then you'd use the wool and then your wife would make blankets and then you took them into town and you traded them for something that you didn't grow or, um, 
you know, more land or another cow or whatever the thing was. But stuff didn't come the way it is now. And um, so if you had a cow, that cow was more sacred. You took care of that cow. It, you know, you got milk from it and stuff. If you killed that cow for meat, which I don't even know. Um, I know that there was um, ones that would just do like uh, cattle farms and stuff like that. But I'm talking about when it was just, you know, you and your husband and your kids when you were out there. And, you know, you might kill a chicken and then use all the parts to feed yourself for a week. But it wasn't this gluttony that we live in now, you know. We've been sold this gluttony way of life. This always strive to be something you're not. Always try, I mean, the whole thing was try and look different than you look. Try and be different than you are. Try and, you know, it's just like beat us down totally. And then, you know, all these people are on all these anxiety medicine and shit. And I was like, we just keep playing along. I was like, oh my God, you guys, come on, wake up. See the system. See what's going on around you. And, um, but so when you would have that, you know, and if you did end up having to slaughter your cows, say maybe you, you know, were, there was a famine that year and there was just no food and you guys really needed to eat your cow and you had to slaughter it. You would use every single bit, you know, you wouldn't waste it. I mean, how rude, like in the corporate farms, it's just, it's wasteful. It's like, they don't. And even selling this whole uh, vegan thing and stuff is um, it is part of just the control, you know? Because look at the, if you had your own cow, you would use the, um, the hide, you would you, you know, you would have new shoes, new boots, you would have a warm blanket, maybe a coat, you know, you would use all, all the stuff that you could possibly use. And, um, you know, now they're trying to get people, instead of having gratitude and, and use things sparingly and not be gluttons, let's just, um, you know, let's move into Soylent Green. Let's just start selling them. Uh, I mean, they would have, they would literally have us eating our, our friend's dead bodies. Only they put them through a process and then squirt them out the end and then we're supposed to eat it. I mean, uh, um, that's just not how things are meant to be. It's meant to be living, you know, in, in sync with nature in um, in, you know, in sync with your spiritual self and to have gratitude for all things, to recognize the beauty when it comes your way, to recognize the miracles. People don't even recognize miracles. They don't even know that they have communication happening. They don't even know they have support system all around them. And um, they just, uh, you know, they feel alone. They feel sad. They feel, you know, they've, they've got all these structures they're holding on to and all of it's fake. It's none of it's real and it's all crumbling apart. Like right now, right now we're in this process of not only giving birth to this new existence, but for the old one to die, this, this toxic energy of, of gluttony, of um, greed, of possession and control, you know, that is all coming to the surface so we can all see it. And I believe that we can transmute some of this energy that is coming our way. We can transmute it and we can help it to, you know, be of more of the light. But there's also some that is just going to, you know, purge itself out, attach to other negativity and go out about its business, you know, going somewhere else where somebody else needs to learn about what evil means, what, um, what toxic energy that there can be. And just, just the whole thing of them trying to sell us as progression is something that we want. We want change. We want to get rid of our traditions. We want to get rid of 
family. We want to get rid of our own identities. We want to just purge it all out and just all become this melded thing. Even in a conscious uh, uh, collective, which we all have a shared consciousness, we all can connect on a certain level. We still have independence. We still have a sovereign individual being and they are trying to do something different. And, but they always kind of just take a little bit of what is real and then kind of dirty it and make it kind of unrecognizable so that you don't quite get trigger, triggered. Some people can be like, you know, this doesn't feel right or whatever, but they always kind of just uh, color it a little bit. So it seems like it is for the good. It seems like it is for the better, but it's not. It's just to tear us down and destroy us more and more and more. We are <laughs> their worst nightmare. The people who have been controlling us, they've tried to hold us so tight because they don't want us to be empowered. And that is what's gonna, oh, I knew she was coming. Oh, this morning she came in uh, she's done this a few times. She opens the screen door out there and then she pushes into the front door. So the screen door must be closed all the way. But, um, oh my gosh, she got so excited this morning. She's just like dancing around. She was so excited. Like, look what I did. And they kept trying to show her how to shut it. So hold on, let me get her. Oh, lady. Mom is talking to her phone. And it's a rainy, rainy day. Oh, you know a song? I is my total theme song. It is um, Sammy Davis Jr. and I Gotta Be Me. Oh my God. Put that song on and just turn it up and just sing along. And you just feel so empowered. You just feel like, fuck yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. I gotta be me. I mean, that's it. I gotta be true to myself. I gotta be here for me. I can't please everybody else. I can't be real and be there for you if I don't agree, you know? I just think it's, such, it's just such a good, a good song. I sent it to my mom and I said, here's my theme song. And she's just, oh, I miss those days of that music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now you can listen to WAP if you want to know about somebody's uh, web their sex life, I guess. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm still so irritated by the whole thing of them trying to sell kids that they need to, like, I don't know, not identify. I mean, I think that the, even the hormones being put in our food is a hundred percent for a nefarious purpose. You know, and you've got kids starting their periods at 10, growing boobs, having to wear bras at nine. <laughs> I mean, come on. And, and now I cannot say, uh, come on without saying, come on, man. Come on, man. And, um, yeah, it's, it's some bullshit. I, I don't buy it at all. And, I think that there is just, you know, to try and get these kids to feel sexual, but also have no identity to just be open to whatever, you know, whoever wants to manhandle me and come on, let's do this. And to just, you know, it's just part of beating them down. And I was telling my mom, you know, they want this generation to be a certain way and then they want to kill all the rest of us off. So you're going to knock my table over again. You know why you have to get right? Why don't you get on the couch? No matter where I'm at, you gotta get right up on me, girl. I love you too. You're my best friend. You are my best friend. Oh, she's a little wet. I really think she looks like she's maybe lost a little bit of weight. I think so. I I can see a couple of uh, like lines at the beginning to show her ribs. Like I don't know how skinny she's gonna get today. I was looking. It's something on my phone and I saw some baby pictures of her and I was looking at her just like her little scrawny body. It was so cute. Looked like it had these long old legs. Her ears used to hang in her dish. God, she's cute. I was just like, Jesus Christ, girl. Now she just circled back. She just came around my little table. 
knocked my phone down. I think it's gonna it's gonna probably just start being a part of my. Um, I think I put it up higher. I think um, it's gonna just start being part of my videos. How many times does Stella knock over the phone? Oh, she's gonna lay right there. Let's see if I put this one. Maybe get this right there. Maybe that's better. Um. Okay, so what I was talking about was um, a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, well, everything, everything's going to be changing. And, you know, um, one of the things too, I, um, with the tarot thing, I really feel like I got to make this point again, because I like to watch tarot, but I am not somebody who's going to a tarot thing <laughs> to see what am I supposed to do with my life. I like the ones where they start talking about stuff that I'm already doing. And then I feel like it gives me more insight and confirmation as to what I'm doing at that time. So it gives me kind of like the answers I'm looking for. But if you're going to tarot just as a clean slate, and just going like, what what should I do with my life? And anything that anybody says that you think that's what you're supposed to do, even if it doesn't resonate, even if it makes no sense, even if you don't understand it at all, then you should probably listen to some more. Not just, um, I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of people who are looking in the wrong places for their healing, for their direction, we're trying to understand things, you know, and, um, you have to get in touch with yourself. You'll find answers in yourself. You'll find communication happening. You'll find them giving you direction. One thing is with me is, um, like if something becomes hard, I don't push through it, you know, like I'm going to make this happen no matter what this is happening. Um, I kind of like go with the flow, like, okay, I'm going to go this direction. Is this where I'm supposed to be going? And if doors are opening and things are happening, then you know, you're on the right path. If you're going and it just feels like everything is closed. Like, how do I get beyond this? Then I say that that's not the path you're supposed to be on. Your path will open up. And sometimes people don't want to see their path, but Man, there's a lot of, um, like, there's this one girl who has been talking to me, um, I don't know, maybe it's been a couple of years by now. Um, I met her on, you meet a lot of people online, and she's, uh, Canadian. She's not really that far from me. And, um, but she's got, she just has this way of, like, Everything must be this, I don't even know how to explain it. Like she has decided, any guy who's nice to her, that that's that's the guy, that's the love of her life. Uh, she knows it, she has these feelings. She, and I was like, yeah, but feel, having feelings when someone's nice to you, that's, that's pretty normal. That is, um, that doesn't mean you're in love. That doesn't mean you're supposed to be with this person. And, you know, you got to kind of see how it goes. And you don't have to just be like, oh, that's it. Because this is a bunch of times. This isn't just like one time. <laughs> I'm not getting you. This is a lot of times. And I take from it is like, and I keep telling her, uh, you know, you got to work on yourself. You got to work on your own healing. You can't just expect that, you know, this person is going to make my life whole. It's going to make it complete. It's going to make me feel better about life. All that comes from within you. And if you're going out feeling like you need someone else to fix you, to heal you, to make you feel whole and happy, you're going to bring someone in that is just like you. So then you got two of you trying to, 
and a lot of resentment, a lot of why aren't you fixing my life? Why aren't, why are you making my life so much harder? And, um, you know, so when you get to that point of like, I love myself so much and my standards are way up here. I'm not accepting anything less. This is what I know I deserve. That is what you will get and it will come to you and it will come to you when it's supposed to come to you. And, um, like for me, like I know, I, I, I know what is coming in my future. Like they've shown me and shown me and shown me and shown me for years and years and years and years. And I do know that I am here as a counterpart to somebody else. Like that has been made very clear to me over and over and so many different sources it's come to me. And, um, and I look at it as kind of like, you know, you have two hands, they each have a role, they each are part of the whole. You have two feet, same thing, two eyes, two ears. We have this, these two things, but they work in unison together. They have like the same function. Inside our bodies, we have, you know, all these organs and it is like we're a complete machine. We're an organic machine. And all of these organs are all like, we have to get air in, that's important. Even though they want to tell us right now, oh, that's that's bad for you. You don't want that. Oh. No, you, you need to have air in. You've got to breathe in, get oxygen in your blood. I'm sorry you're so sad, lady. I'm really telling something. Um, you got to have oxygen in your blood. And that is what gives your um, all your organs. That's what keeps them healthy. And, um, and there's just there's so much misinformation or just people just don't understand or they're not thinking things through or something. They're just, everybody's just believing what they're told. They're not questioning anything, you know? Um, but it is super important. We are machines and you know, we have organic parts. That's what makes, and that is one thing too, that I had heard in when I was watching some of the stuff of disclosure stuff, you know, that's been my thing the whole time is disclosure stuff. And, um, you know, I'm excited for them to be disclosing now about the aliens and stuff in their little way, which, you know, it's going to turn around. Oh, we had no idea there was these, these, um, beings out there that were trying to communicate. Okay, well, you know, you've been letting them run the world, so I'm pretty sure you knew. And, um, but you know, they got to do it in their cute little way to trick us so that we don't think that they're tricking us. But that's all they do, trick us. And so, you know, I'm really excited for stuff to be coming in. It's like a tiny little, uh, tiny little crack and seeping out information. But, you know, more information is going to come. Right now, I kind of see the people who are still in their deep brainwash, that they're like, um, you know, like when you get muscles or clams or whatever, and then you have some, and they've got just like a little tiny opening, and then you put them in the water and they open. Well, that is what I think. Like, there's so many of these people, they have a little tiny opening, and then there's going to be some significant event that's going to happen and it's just going to open them up. And yeah, then they're going to have to see what's real. And they're gonna to have to go through a whole self-discovery. It's gonna be super exciting. Like in our near future, life is gonna be so, so different than what it is right now. I mean, gosh, from the time I was born, how many different, you know, transitional kind of periods that I've lived in when you really like start looking at it, what they've done by generation by generation and how they've molded and manipulated and how they've caused so much um, conflict between every group possible. They don't want us to have any connection at all, even though they're trying to market this which I really, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Why they really 
are pushing this biracial couple thing. I mean, like I said before, I, I just, I can't even think of a real, I mean, I've known people before who have, um, you know, gone out with people of different races or whatever, but, and, and I don't care. I mean, I don't care about any of that stuff. I, th I am I'm one of those people who believes love is love. You're going to fall in love with um, a soul. You don't, you don't fall in love with the, the, the shell. I mean, if you fall, if you fall in love with the avatar, with the body, with that, then, you know, I mean, that's kind of shallow, I guess. I don't think that that would be real love necessarily. I think love is, comes from a soul level. You fall in love with the soul. So yeah, I don't care about what the outside is. What I don't understand is why they just keep trying to sell us this certain thing where every single movie has a biracial couple, biracial gay couple. Why do we have all of this push? We don't have a bunch of biracial couples out there screaming on the stairs, please represent us in movies. What is going on? We exist. It's like, I, I think that the most people who are screaming, who want to uh, be seen is um, the LGBTQ, you know, but they are being the most, um, they're being the most manipulated right now. I feel like with uh, the agenda, it's hitting hard on that, you know? And they don't really get the whole thing of what's going on. But, you know, the, there's so much. When I went, I went to um, a march. Oh, the Women's March was the first one. And mind you, you know, I want to make this point as well. Because I am, I believe, you know, that all of us different souls that came here to bring in this certain energy is, um, you know, we are put in certain places and like where I'm at and now I'm starting to know some of the other women who think like me started thinking like, Oh my gosh, it's kind of like we're a grid to bring this energy. Like we're connecting this energy. And so you kind of, you're going to run into this energy that we are connecting. If you are one of those people out there that, doesn't know what shit's going on. And, um, and I'm in Washington state where people are completely, Oh my gosh, they're so progressive. And, uh, you know, I mean, freaking uh, gayer boy, he lives out there on one of the lakes and our governor, it, it's funny now because you can't find this information, but from what I had seen the governor here, which who I think is probably really in jail, but that he um, is married to Gator's sister. <laughs> or somehow, somehow there there's a, a crossover in, you know, relations by marriage. I mean, come on, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, what is that? All these people with, you know, this nephew is married to this person. I mean, you guys, we have got the most incestual bloodlines in the world, running the world. And people just, you got, you got to start seeing what the fuck is happening. But um, I was going to talk about something else before I went off on that. Um, oh. Wow, that drives me crazy when I do that. I do it all the time. So, I go crazy all the time. Um, oh, so, anyways, um, maybe this was where I was at or maybe it wasn't. But, so you have the, the, the two sides. And so, I feel like I'm for sure here on a mission and there's a counterpart. I mean, the stuff that has been told to me and shown to me over and over and over for years now. I 100% believe that. And I believe that this, what I'm doing, somehow is going to lead me to that person. Like when I started, all of a sudden I felt like I had stepped into this other reality, this other future that was coming. Like I, I stepped into it. 
and it felt like so real. And um, so I know that this will lead me either directly to that person or it will lead me to somebody who will introduce me to that person or whatever. But I also, you know, I have this psychic connection with this person and um, there's communication that has been going on for a long time. And when I even look back as a child, I'm like, I was communicating with this person as a child. And um, I, I don't want to go completely off on that because it's a whole thing and I don't want to get, uh, you know, started on all that. Um, I'm only saying it because, uh, you know, we're going to see how this plays out uh, together. And I think that that's what's going to happen. There's a lot more that is um, shown to me and um, and told to me and stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna be working on that. I'm not gonna just say all of the stuff. Cause I also, I just, I'm, I don't think that you get all your, like the whole thing where people try and like do this uh, sideshow psychic stuff. I just, I, I, I just don't think that's what it's about. I think if you're connecting with your um, guidance, it's not, you know, it's not to like get lottery numbers. It's to um, have direction. And, um, and I really, really believe that they enjoy when you are having fun, when you're putting that energy out and they surround you, they feed off of that energy as well. You know, and I, I, can, I mean, mine can be like silly walks, silly dances, just um, I, talking to them, uh, telling, um, you can tell them jokes. I mean, they're funny. They'll tell you jokes back. They, um, well, I have some that are funny. I don't know. Maybe not everybody does. But um, anyways, I, I just say that they're all of the things that you could be feeling empty about or confused about. It is all, you know, finding it inside yourself, you know? I should just have Stella be out there and have her talk. It'd be my voice and then have her mouth move. Oh, she's so sweet. Um, wow, there was a bunch of more stuff I wanted to talk about, especially because I took a bath. So then I was just like one inside after another. And um, there was a bunch of really good ones, too. Um, but, you know, what comes in my head when I'm talking is what I'm meant to talk about right now. And um, it was this morning when I put down my uh, yoga mat, you know, and Stella, it's best if she's just snoring when I put it down. <laughs> because when I put it down... Um, then she has to go and lay on it and she'll take up the whole damn thing. And so it will limit whatever stretches that I'm doing. And, um, you know, I could get all irritated and make her go and stuff like that. But I just, I kind of, I really feel like there's something about just going with the flow and that goes all the way back. I know I talked about this before with the, um, the Buddhist Bible that I read, which I don't know if it's their actual, but I don't, I don't know. I got it at a Seattle hotel and, um, you know, they had the Buddhist Bible and the Holy Bible. So I took the Buddhist one and, um, some of the stuff that was in there, but was that one story? I swear the one story was in there about the dad and the fa the son and the dad on that hike and they were walking and they had to get somewhere and the son kept getting so irritated if the dad needed to stop or any of the things that distracted them or held them up the son would get super irritated and the father would keep being like you know we're, we're going to get there when we're supposed to get there we're going to get there when it's the right time to get there things are going to go the way they're supposed to go how they're meant to go and when they got there they were standing up on the cliff looking down and Hiroshima just happened and everything was blown up if they would have gotten there when the son had wanted they would have been part of the, uh, you know, the dead people. So 
I, I just really believe that is 100% true. And I also, though, don't believe death is the end and death is tragic. I believe that it's a transition. Like, I mean, I don't think there's that many people who, like, you have some things you want to do as who you are born as at this time, but it's not like a never-ending job, you know? These people who are trying to hold on and, you know, drink baby's blood and shit like that to try and keep their youth because they don't want to die. Well, you know, if they've done a lot of evil shit, then it, you know, they have it in their head that they're going to go to a certain place. You create what you believe. Um, you know, when I was reading those um, near death experience books, you know, if, if somebody was really religious and totally believed, you know, you, you have to go to, um, when you cross over, Jesus is there waiting for you. Then Jesus will be there waiting for you. You know, I think it, he's a, a kind, I, I, for one thing, I think that his, his aspects of self are much bigger than, I think he can fractal himself to that and meet anybody at the gate that needs him to help transition them to see what's up um and i'm sure you know that there is a lot but you know if that's what you need when you die that will be there if you just need dead relatives to be there if you just you know it is so much about the you create what it is that you everything when you're outside of a body you create everything you can move through things you can think of things and be there you can um be next to someone just by thinking of them you know we have so much more abilities when we're not um incarnated but when we're incarnated now we're moving into this higher state of consciousness where i'm saying that other beings have already been living in this higher state of consciousness and we're we're ascending we're joining them we're moving up and that is part of this awakening and this realizing who and what we are. And one thing too that I have as to my understanding is that there are conscious beings that are um, more, um, you know, like what we think of as being aliens or some people think of them as devils, but, um, but they are uh, more um, spiritually aware as well. They have more spiritual connectedness. They, um, they have a deeper understanding of life. Like the veil, even when they're incarnated, they, the veil is off. Once you get to a certain level, you don't have to, like you, you know what you're there for. You know that you're there to learn. You know your purpose. And you don't need your purpose to go on forever and ever. Because you can go, you know, do another purpose in another life. So... I mean, I, there's no reason that we would ever want to stay alive as one person for eternity, you know? So we should be happy and proud and celebrate when people transition because it's a completion. It is, um, it's an exciting thing for them as a soul. And, um, but that is another thing too about, um, oh, this is what I was saying before when I forgot about the disclosure stuff is that some of these spaceships are very organic, like they work with your mind. And that's what they are even saying about this med bed thing that I've been hearing now too. It's all going to be spiritual. Like you have to be connected to yourself to heal yourself. You have to be connected to yourself to fly some of these ships and stuff. That is, you know, that's where we're moving into is this, it's all in this connection to self. And you don't have to have anyone else tell you what God is, what angel, what any of this stuff is, because you are going to know it. You're going to understand it on your own level. We don't have to argue. We don't have to convince each other that it's this way or that way. It's how we understand it. And it's how we understand it is that the time and place that we are at right now. And it is based on your your incarnations and stuff of where you are and what level you are and what you're here to understand. Like it's 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 more complex in that area than 
Like I don't, I really don't understand life on the same kind of level as what some people understand life as. And I'm curious to see, like, how how is it gonna play out? What is going to, um, I'm, I'm really curious to see, like some of these people who just believe you die, you just cease to exist. Like there's no, it's just weird. If everybody could come out of their body for just a couple minutes, if you could just come out and just feel yourself outside of your body and know you are completely you, you are completely whole. There's no difference. And then you could see your body. Then it just, you, you just would know. You wouldn't have to have anybody convince you of anything. You feel yourself outside of a body. You know yourself outside of a body. And you can even feel what you look like. It's weird. You don't have to look in the mirror. You just feel it. Um, but, you know, I mean, this is, it's going to be a lot for some people to wrap around their heads, especially when they've been cut off completely from all spiritual recognition in themselves, in the world, and you know, they've been taught to laugh at it and joke about it and think it's ridiculous. And, you know, if you can't see it, feel it, hear it, touch it, then it doesn't exist. And there is, a, you know, for some souls, when they cross over, when they go out of their body, there is such a confusion as to what to do. And so I kind of see it as like here on earth, you know, we've been in this cycle and there's been these souls. And I've told you before i believe in my incarnations on this planet it was a long time ago i don't believe i mean i may have come sporadically but i, I guess that's kind of just saying like I, I see myself as an old soul and that would be based on because i have understandings of things that other people don't have any understandings of well you would have to have those understandings from having experiences to teach you about those things you know you, you're not just you're not just born with uh, you know oh they're gifted they understand this or that no you you understand things because you've experienced things and um so i believe that i am here to help with that energy you know like i was saying yesterday it's about this um you know it's kind of like changing the current on this planet and um and there's just certain things that i just understand that i know i'm here to share and um you know and it's going to sound completely insane and crazy to some people but some people are that cut off from their selves from spirit from being their own true authentic self and um you know i mean that's and some of those also are here on purpose to cause um you know kind of like okay so if you think about it is the current you know and we've had a uh, certain current and we have all these energies from all these different places and everything out there come in and we all are going by god consciousness or god's law and so we are turning the current to go this other direction, right? And so the people who are, um, if you have that going, then if you have certain energies that come in to interfere and that they, you know, set anchor in places to try and distract from that, to try and make the water go back the other way or the flow of energy, that's kind of like, how I um, translate kind of what I'm seeing. Other times, uh, you know, I'll see things and I'll, I'll feel like it gets translated in other ways in my head. <clears throat> but I really do um, see that as being that way. And then what I was saying, like with these other women who are meeting in this grid that's being created. And I think that's all over. It's all over the planet. Like, there's so many 
of us that have come in and you know when you think about like the souls that are on here the energy that has been incarnating in the most recent you know they are um they are living their lives you know learning or whatever but if there's ones okay so it's kind of like if you had some fourth graders but then you had like some high school students come in and tell them about what's going to happen in junior high or whatever so that's kind of like how i see it it's just people who have had more experiences to come in to try and um help redirect this planetary energy that has been happening for a long time and it's not just like these beings coming in or these energies or souls or whatever coming in and doing it themselves this is a cycle this is uh you know god's energy the 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 energy of the whole to pull in to create this change because it's a cycle there's a lot of cycles that um you know the people don't understand at this time but you know that's that's coming as knowledge like this is very exciting times when you really get into it about all of the things that are going to be learned and taught and understood over the next few years it's super super exciting you know and um it gives me hope of being more in the world that I could understand because I could never understand the world that I've been living in since I was a child. I was like, this just makes no sense. What the hell is going on? I was very concerning, you know, like when you're questioning everybody and everything, like even when it came to war, like with um because when i was a kid it was vietnam and then they just kept being one after another and i just kept being like how, how do people think like this is going to solve something killing each other isn't going to solve anything even when all of this chaos started you know whatever a year ago well it's been going for a long time but i mean you know, the most focus, where the most people are seeing, then, you know, people just killing each other over their views, over their opinions. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm going to drive myself crazy with that. One time I got stuck on the motherfucker Jones. Oh my God, I couldn't stop myself. I <laughs> <laughs> make it stop coming out of my mouth I think that's what's gonna happen here <laughs> and the circle back and I don't even watch those people I don't watch them talk I just find them to be I don't know all the people that are in the in the news or being um, highlighted or you know put out there right now for everyone to see it's all for humiliation. It's all, anybody who's being exposed right now, it's because they've done some really bad stuff, really bad stuff. And they, you know, they get to, we get to find out who these people are. There's so many people who I've never even heard of. I didn't know who they were ever. And the guy who farted so loud uh, when he was being interviewed, 11-11, um, when he, and then, you know, comes out, well, he's, his girlfriend is a Chinese spy and, <laughs> stuff is like yeah it, it's all being out for their humiliation so we get to see what pieces of shit some of these people are that we've given our power to that we've we've um uh what is that we've trusted we've we've given our power our own power to these other people i mean fuck wrap your head around that man um, oh, I want to say another thing too about the farting thing is um, Stella cracks me up. Because the other day she um, farted and then she's always just like, what the hell's happening? And she'll like look back like, what's that noise? Where's it coming from? <laughs> and, then, and then she'll get all embarrassed. It's, it just cracks me up. I always tell her she has a tootie booty. Um, she's so cute. Um, okay, so... 
I think I've covered a lot of stuff. You know, we're 54-44. Um, so I probably should just, just quit rambling for a while. Um, but I think I've given some things to think about. And so think about those. If you want to talk about them, email me. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.